most respected juries, dignitaries of the dais, and all eminent members of ICT, ACT, and my dear powerful youngsters. A very good morning to one and all. Very good morning. I said powerful youngsters, but I could not hear anyone saying good morning. Yes. Here I'm going to present a brief, brief talk on we can make the change. Let me start my speech with Gandhiji's quote, be the change you wish to see in the world. Every one of us, when we come across flaws, we always wish to see changes in the world. But unfortunately, none of us is ready to make the change or none of us is dare to make the change. I would insist that if you want to see changes in the world, let the changes begin from you. And here, my speech is an attempt to make everybody believe that we can make the change. The topic I have chosen may be a common or regular observation, but as this environment is full of students, youngsters and young power, I think this is the right place where I can register my most significant ideas. Yes, every one of us will have different goals. As engineers, we may want to be mechanical engineers, civil engineers, software engineers, whatever it might be. After achieving all these so-called goals, we may buy a brand new car to our father or dream house to our mother and get our life settled. But all these are our responsibilities as a son, as a daughter, as a brother or sister. So what is our role as the citizens of our country? What is our contribution to the society? What is our part in the development of the nation which we are living in? When such questions are raised, we are unanswerable. It is so unfortunate that in this competitive world, in this catastrophic mechanical life, wherein we struggle for our day-to-day -day survival, we fail to contribute ourselves to the society. Our societal contribution has been depleted, and we started treating every individual as our rivals in the race of life. And I think this is one of the major problems that India is facing today. As we all know, India is the second largest country with 1.21 billion people. And to our surprise, there are 315 million students, which is almost equal to the entire population of the USA. This means that the 315 million students of India can alone form the fourth largest country in the world. Yes. India is huge. India is a big nation with enormous resources. India has wide varieties of heritages. India has always been known for its tradition and culture. But still, India remains a developing country. Despite all its resources, one third of the world's poorest people are in India. Despite all its resources, India is still unable to overcome poverty. So dear friends, whom are we going to blame it on? Whom do you think will be responsible for this? Do you think that the Indian government alone is responsible for this? Or the senior citizens of our country? Or the political parties in our nation? No. It's me who is standing on the dais is responsible for this. It's you who are listening to me who are responsible for this. One way or the other, as citizens of India, every individual in this country is responsible for this underdevelopment crisis. We fail to realize our social responsibility. We fail to care for our society. We fail to care for our fellow citizens. That is the major problem here. When one part of our tradition claims that women are godly creatures, on the other part, critics against women still remains. Two minor girls were brutally raped and killed in our northern state. An innocent six-year-old girl was raped in our neighboring state. Even as recent news, a high court judge has resigned her post fearing that she would be molested by her colleague. See how atrocious it is. So ranging from Delhi to Tamil Nadu, every day we come across hundreds of crimes against women. So what is our answer for all those victims? Dear friends, we cannot relax ourselves thinking that it is an issue of the particular family or the particular state. As fellow citizens, every one of us must be answerable for all those victims. And we all have to understand that it is a nudging threat to our sisters. 61 poor laborers lost their lives in the building collapse as a result of carelessness of a private sector. So what are we going to do for the families of all those victims? Starting from underground coal to air helicopters, corruption prevails everywhere. So how are we going to fight against this corruption? Prices of everyday needs go up and up due to which common people are affected. So what, how are we going to overcome this inflation? 
So every time when we came across crises such as corruption, women critics, terrorism, unemployment, poverty, inflation, etc., we always waited for changes, but none of us came forward to make the change. It's us who have to find solutions for all these issues. But unfortunately, our concern over the issues and our care for the victims was only at the level of Facebook comment. We did not do anything other than clicking comments on social networking sites. But dear friends, please understand that it is us who have to overcome all these issues. And it is completely ridiculous that we wait for someone else to clean our homes. The major problem here is we always want to remain in a comfortable zone and none of us has the courage to come out of it. Dear friends, we cannot cross the ocean unless we have the courage to leave the site of the shore. So let us all break our shells and come out of our comfortable zone. Let's dare to come into powers to make the change. Despite having common useless goals, let's aim something ultimate. Let's aim to be the IAS officers to govern the country better. Let's aim to be the IPS officers to fight against corruption. Let's aim to be the Chief Justice of India to hang everyone who fails to respect women's fidelity. And let's aim to be entrepreneurs to put an end to unemployment. If you start thinking like that, and if it all happens, that is the day where India is going to make the change. On hearing this, we may all be wondering whether such big changes can be brought into action by a common man or woman. Yes, let's believe that we can make the change. Let's believe in ourselves strongly. When the entire world was dark, Thomas Alva Edison was the only person to bring light to the entire world. If he could do that revolution, why can't we? Dear friends, please understand that every revolutionary man was once a common man. Everybody reaches this earth as common boy or girl. It's us who have to decide how we are going to be. I may sound cinematic, but if we believe, it will be reality one day. So let us all believe that we are born here to succeed. Let us all believe that we are born here to create revolution. And let us all believe in our country. Many countries, including India, claim that India's overpopulation is a hindrance to its development. But I don't stand on this point. If you think that there are 1.21 billion bodies and fleshes in the country, then that is a barrier. On the other hand, if you think that there are 1.21 billion brain and manpower, that is the strength of our country. Let's strengthen our strength. So India is huge. India has enormous manpower. India has enormous students' power. And education is our assistance. As far as education is concerned, there are 650 universities in our country. But the sad truth is, none of these universities was figured out in the top 200 universities of the world. This clearly reveals that there is something basically wrong with our education system, and our education system has to be revised. In the recent years, education has been misquoted as the tool for money making. But we all have to understand that education is for revolution. Education is not for survival. Education is for revolution. Please don't try to squeeze your education into, into Marxist education. is something beyond that. Getting 100 out of 100 in mathematics will be useless without social care. Getting 100 out of 100 in science will be completely futile if you can't invent something which would cater to our farmers and scavengers. So again, I want to reiterate that education is for revolution. So let us all create revolution in the world with our education. Dear friends, every student here will one day be a father or mother. I request, please don't raise your children as we have been brought up by our society. Nurture them with the importance of social care. Before sending them to computer classes, make sure whether they know Indian constitution and Indian judiciary. Teach them the biographies of great leaders who have contributed their lives for our society. Teach them the literature, heritages, and history of our country. On the whole, raise them as the responsible citizens of India rather than as our selfish sons and daughters. This is the way we can see the need for social contribution in our future generation. So here I have put forward several issues which I feel are the major problems of India. But I couldn't research about what exactly every individual must do to overcome all these issues. 
But the only thing I want to tell you is be with social contribution. Start living for the country. Raise your voice against injustice. Come forward to make changes when you find something wrong in our society. If you feel our political systems are drainage, you come forward to reform it. Let great leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, Kamaraj, and Anna Dore arise from this crowd. Think India is our family and all 1.21 billion people are the members of our family and start working for them. So as students, how can we contribute ourselves to the society? We cannot spend lakhs and lakhs of money over our society. And practically, we, we all cannot become chief ministers and prime minister to care for our country. Dear friends, social contribution can be in any simple ways. For instance, here I have thousands of students in front of me. And I believe everyone in this crowd is knowledgeable. If we can form an organization and reach out to the children who cannot go to schools due to poverty at remote rural areas, and if we can educate them, that is social contribution. That is a social contribution. Why can't we do it as students? When you give someone food, you give him a day. But when you give someone education, you give him values. You give him strength and you give him life. So let's give life to lifeless. Please, please dear friends, understand, after completing your degree, you may get into your profession which you want. You may get your dream salary. You may get a beautiful girl or a smart guy. And you, you may settle down in a comfortable life. But please don't stop your efforts with that. Your responsibility is beyond what you think as your responsibility. Take time to think about your fellow students who suffer due to unemployment. And think what you can do. And make sure you do something to the society through your profession. Dear friends, you can be anybody. You can be from any family, from any community, from any place. You can be anything that doesn't matter. But please do something to this society. That is what I want to tell you, dear friends. If everybody starts realizing this, then no one can restrain India from becoming the number one country in the world. So here, I submit the conclusion part of my speech on your hands. You are the ones who can conclude my speech because you are the young people of our nation. Here is our young power, here is our young energy, and here is our young India. Dear friends, please realize that we are the ones whom our country is dependent on. We are the ones who are expected to make the change. We are the ones who can create revolution in the world. And let us all believe that we are all born here to create revolution. And I'm very proud to share statistics that today's youngsters are very contributed towards this society than youngsters in the olden years. We shall clap, I think. <laughs> because it's you, you are the heroes here. But all I want to do is catalyze your reaction. Let us all join our hands. Times are gone where India had been struggling for its freedom. Now it's time for us to challenge the entire world. Now it's time for us to witness the power of young India in the global level. There will be a day where all the countries across the world will look up to India. Where all the MNCs across the world will seek CEOs from India. Where all the educational institutions in the world will wait for Indian professors. Where all the research centers in the world will be dependent on our ISRO. Our recent PSLV and Mangalian are hard witnesses for this. And one day, Indian inventions will rule the world. And one day, India will stand as the most developed country in the world. I am being one of among you waiting and working for the day. On that successful day, I'll be really proud to say that I was a part of young India which made the change. Thank you so much.